morning guys, my name is Landon and today as you guys can see my new router has come, hold on. Okay, so my new router is here and it is absolutely massive. I think it's called like the Blackhawk something, it's Netgear as you can see, I have little of these propeller things. I don't know what these are but it makes it look so cool and I actually have a little basketball goal. Let me see if I can actually make this, oh crap, okay, hold on, there we go, okay, I'm gonna shoot it, oh, okay, well either way, New router, it's actually pretty cool, and uh, it's gonna make me play a lot better, which is great. Oh well, boys and girls, welcome back to yet again another video. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed that little bit of uh, an intro with my new router. I had no idea, for the record, that I was actually getting that. My dad, that was all him. And our router was actually kind of old, so it was really nice that he started to get a new one, but I had no idea that he had any like implication of even trying to do that. So first things first, I wanted to first apologize for the fact that I haven't uploaded my recap video and the event's been over for a couple days. Uh, I had a really rough time getting back to school, getting back into things. And now I'm finally like stressing back down. Like I finally have gotten all those things taken care of. And now we're back to where we were. We're back in the swing of things. So I do apologize for that. But today, I'm going to be talking about my recap from UMG DC. Before we get anything started, I want to say if anyone from UMG is watching this video and who had any like ideas or any you know implication of doing anything this weekend thank you very much I really do appreciate it I know all the staff was amazing this weekend this has been referred to as probably one of the best if not the best events production wise and also venue wise from a UMG event so that was absolutely awesome and also a major major thank you to if anyone from UMG watches this for inviting me yet again to another event it was absolutely amazing it was an insane time and I got to to meet a lot of cool fans as well which was totally worth the drive and to not the drive but totally worth the trip I guess you could say like if I would have just met those people and just came straight home totally worth it because of how cool everyone was so I'm gonna give a shout out to Big Pork Nation Cannon uh, some guy that I met on the escalator someone I met in the like the stairs going up to the second floor and also Mike I think Mike I met this weekend too I'm not sure his like his name on the, any community or not but still thank you guys so much for coming up to me it was so awesome to meet you guys I know I missed a couple people too so that was Kind of unfortunate. So from this weekend, I'm going to go and give you guys the top six. All these teams placed inside of the money. Uh, we'll also talk about the other four teams who made through the open bracket who also got $1,000. So coming in fifth or sixth from this weekend at DC, the DC 50K, the, the, what was it, the Scuff 50K. I think I said that enough times this weekend, but still, the Scuff 50K coming in fifth or sixth was Team Caliber and Isolation Empire. In fourth was Team Envy. In third was Team Elevate. In second came to the Nile Esports. And in first was Optic Gaming. Shout out to myself. I called that Optic Gaming would win this event. I had a phase in the grand finals, but you know, other things. Have I, I got the team that won first, so major points for myself on that one. Not really at all. But the four teams that made it through the open bracket were XGN, Team Justice, Lethal Gaming, and Vanquish. And I, I definitely predicted these teams to come out. There were like a couple other teams that could have, uh, but I definitely had Vanquish. And Vanquish is one of the first teams that we're going to be talking about who did uh, not placing the best, but it wasn't like a terrible placing. I mean, I mean, it's not what they wanted, uh, which was 17th to 20th. Uh, you know, I know that they're not happy with that you know, Pacific placing, and I know that they've actually decided to go ahead and kind of get rid of their current roster. I know there's a lot of complications with uh, certain players and stuff, but got X the factor this weekend for them. Had a lot of good moments, but ultimately didn't really lead to a whole lot of success. So they had some good moments, like I said, versus TK actually casted uh, over them. Pretty good moments here and there, but ultimately didn't really lead to a whole lot after that. So going a little bit further, I was actually against 17th through 20th, and I was like, okay, so this is the farthest line that we're going to go to. Actually, 21 through 24th. This was actually Optic Nation, uh, Threes Up, Circa, Devoid, and it looks like Euphoric Gaming. Uh, no, I don't know, that was too long. Devoid Gaming, not Euphoric. Euphoric was in the 25th to 28th. So... Optic Nation, um, so, let's just say this. I saw Hex made a video today, which I'm getting ready to watch after I make this video, so I probably should have watched that before I talk about Optic Nation, and as far as the roster changes go, I don't know if they're going to make a roster change, should they? Yeah, like, let's just be real. Okay, so Owen's a good team, they've had some good moments, but which Owen are you actually going to get? That was the problem with me this weekend, I had them coming out of their pool, which they didn't, uh, and I, I was like, you know what, this could be the good Owen, this could be the Owen that places at times 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, or we could have the Owen that places in the top 20. And we just happen to get the Owen that plays top 20, and that is definitely not what you want. It's one thing to be placing bad and change, it's another thing to have good placings and then have bad placings and refer to those and say, why are we not doing the same thing? Like, we show signs of success at times, and then we show signs of decline. It's one thing, like I said, to have all kinds of signs of decline because then you know we can get rid of our roster, but it's a lot different when you've shown good signs and then you've shown bad signs. 
And it's like, how do we work from here? Because we have good moments, we have bad moments. How do we do this? And that all comes down to a one, two-person roster change. Because there's some good moments with Owen. Like, you have to hand it to them. Sometimes they play really good. Imbos can go off at times. I mean, Mochilla's very consistent as well. They have good moments. But it's just so frustrating to see a good team who has the capability just not use the, the talent that they could have. So we'll go ahead and make a roster change before, uh, what, there's like a certain deadline, I think after season three playoffs, which is coming in the next couple weekend or the next couple weeks. Once that's over, I believe there's a certain like trade limit where you can have a certain time before Worlds actually happens. So if I was Owen, I would make a change, but will they realistically in my mind? I don't think they will, to be honest with you. And if they do, it'll be a one person change. Who will it be? Your guess is as good as mine. Kind of gazing through the the current, uh, I guess you could say, placings. I'm looking at 13th or 16th right now, uh, which is Center Gaming, Vex Gaming, XGN, and Epsilon. So it looks like a lot of teams uh, that weren't supposed to do very well kind of in this spot, which is kind of normal. Uh, I did. I got to cast over Stunner once, where they got absolutely wrecked by OG, which was uh, you're not really a surprise. Baker was pretty good for their squad as well. Uh, Vex, a pretty big surprise. I honestly thought that we would see Vex placed a little bit higher. Uh, I think Vex had a stream last night talking about the future of their team, which I didn't really get a chance to watch. But still, um, you know, Vex, one of the teams that I thought would be pretty well coming to this event, I believe either Proto or Holler or Proto, I don't know his, his name. It's either Proto or Holler. One of them or both of them said that they're leaving Vex, so that's going to be kind of unfortunate for them. They're both really good and have played together in the past, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with the future of Vex. But moving on, uh, we had XGN. <clears throat> XGN is kind of full of, uh, of, of players who've been... Swapping through rosters, I feel like there's always like this certain group of players, like a certain list, and it's like, you, you, if you're a team owner and you're like, okay, well we're gonna get this guy because he's played on BVB and he's played on, you know, Justice, he's played on this team, he's played on that team, we're gonna grab him for our roster as well. And I feel like it's been like Killa and Study, Fizzerp has been on BVB, he's been on SB, he's been on a bunch of squads as well, and while I thought this team was good, like they have the capabilities of being pretty good, uh, this is kind of where I had them. This is a pretty ideal place, uh, I guess, for... Their team, I guess. The next squad we have is actually Epsilon. Now, I didn't expect Epsilon to be here at all. I would have probably said maybe 7th through 8th. Uh, and maybe 5th through 6th if they were really, really good. But Epsilon just did not have the event that they were looking forward to. Um, you know, this roster is okay. It's a lot different now with having Swanee um, you know, no longer be here than set a Parasite. And I also saw that Epsilon EU got rid of their roster, which does not make any sense to me. Because I'm kind of worried, to be honest, we actually talked about this on the sticks the other day, uh, about the new, like, the EU scene kind of diminishing in a way, but it's not actually diminishing at all. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to explain, but I'll leave a link uh, in the description. If the video's been uploaded, because it does take time to render, uh, I will put a link down in the description to our previous sticks episode, where we talk about a bunch of different stuff, a lot of things more in depth than in this video. But Epsilon.na, uh, not having the weekend that I'm sure they wouldn't have imagined uh, at all. Moving on to 9th through 12th, looks like we had Lethal Gaming, Team Justice, TCM, and Rise Nation. Uh, Lethal Game, Lethal Gaming. I actually really like this team. I believe Reviction and Neglect were new pickups for Lethal coming into this tournament. Uh, I believe that they were on Mutiny. Maybe relapse. I think it might have been mutiny coming in for a while. But regardless, they made it through uh, through the open bracket. And I watched them play one series against someone, and they had some good moments, but they just kind of got wrecked after that. Their uh, team owner was really really cool. I actually got to talk to him for a little bit at the analysis desk. Uh, not while we were on air, but kind of just talking to him a little bit. And he seemed like a really cool guy. Uh, moving on to our next team, which is actually Team Justice, uh, one of the teams obviously along with Lethal who made it through the open bracket. A very talented team. Uh, got to cast over them on Alpha against 3's up. The winner of that game advanced to uh, pool play, and they did pretty well. Uh, they had a little bit of shaky moments, I do have to say, against 3's up. I was like, like seeing how well they did against teams like FaZe, for instance, and in their group, I would have not predicted, a, predicted that at all after their game versus 3's up for the fact that they had a lot of mistakes. A couple of the games were really close, and it was only a best of three, so if you're down one, you're only one game away from being out. Uh, but it was a 2-0. Justice looked pretty good, and whenever you have Kenny and Envoy, it's like, you know, give me a break. Kenny is a very good AR, and I was also very happy about Spacely. Uh, you know, Spacely's had a rough time this entire game of AW. He's had a really rough title, and I was kind of happy to see him playing well, and obviously Justice ended up 3 0 phase. What? Would have never thought of that prediction in my life, to say, to say the least. Uh, but, you know, it's basically, I, I was really happy to see his performance. He seemed pretty motivated. And, uh, you know, while it was 9th through 12th, still having a little bit of successes here and there can, uh, you know, kind of 
make you feel a lot better if you're if you're a pro player. Moving on to seventh through eighth, we had a Team Orbit and FaZe Clan. FaZe did not even make it through their groups, and that was all thanks to the plays of Justice. Uh, Justice Justice did so well, and also did an Envy did as well. I think they finished both three and one, and then FaZe also finished three and one. It was something like where they all tied, but it came down to map count, and FaZe had ended up losing more maps than anyone else, which meant that FaZe was down to the loser's bracket. They were trying to power back all uh, on Sunday and Saturday and stuff like that, and they just could not make it past Isolation Empire. It did go to a game five, and uh, they just couldn't get past the wild card of ISO, I guess you could say. So, unfortunate placing for FaZe. Definitely would have had them in my top two, without a doubt. I didn't have them winning this event for some reason. I was like, you know, I just don't think that they're going to get there. What For what reason did I think of that? I don't know. But I just didn't see them making it too far, I guess. So, FaZe along with Orbit. Orbit had some good moments as well. I believe they played Optic and Happy was going off. But it just wasn't strong enough. And, uh, you know, they just didn't have... Um... They just didn't have it, I guess you could say. I mean, Orbit has good, has good moments here and there. They're a good roster, but this is kind of like where I see them. Like, FaZe on the other hand, on the other, excuse me, on the other hand, I see them in like the top three teams, the top two teams right now. And as far as Orbit goes, I kind of see them in the seventh through eighth spot, if that's if that makes any sense. So we got to fifth through sixth, we had Team Caliber and Isolation Empire. Obviously, ISO was there to knock out FaZe and would later lose. Uh, ISO is a very wild card team. I see them beating really good teams at times. Like they're not necessarily terrible at any game type, but they're not necessarily amazing at, at any other game type as well. They're very consistent, which I really like. It's nice to have a really consistent, um, you know, team who is going to constantly be hard to beat in every game type kind of that's kind of like how iso works uh but moving on we also had tk i think i casted every single team caliber game that was available to cast i think there was two times where tk had matches on alpha and there was once that they didn't have a broadcast street uh, one of their games wasn't broadcasted every other time i casted their game in almost every single game TK went to a game five and I feel bad for ISO to be honest with you like I like I like I mean not ISO excuse me I feel really bad for TK for how many times they went to game five like they were leading against one team they started off really well beating denial game five round 11 would have not predicted that at all uh, but you know TK coming up very hot they went to game five with E6 they went to game five with ISO they went to game five with anyone that you can really think of uh, I, I believe the one game they played off stream they 3 0 so it was like go figure the one game they don't play on stream the one game I'm not casting they get a 3-0. Uh, I believe they finished at the top of their pool as well, which was absolutely awesome. I didn't have them making it out of their pool. so And it really made me like kind of open my eyes to TK because TK is always a team where I, I don't bash them, but it's like, why aren't these guys doing well? It's the same kind of thing with Owen for me. Uh, but I got to watch all their strats. I literally know everything about TK. So if you want to know anything, like their S&D strats on, uh, you know, whatever map, Detroit. I know that Sharp's going to rush B with the bomb and garage while, sh uh, while uh, what is it, Theory watches the snipe cross. And while Neslo goes into green. Like, I know absolutely everything everything about their search and destroy strats uh to a t i guess you could say to a tk that no okay uh next team we had moving on is actually going to be envy in fourth place uh envy had some good moments i was really happy with envy's placing to be honest with you and i was like coming to this event i think this would kind of duplicate their roster changes moving forward fourth place i'm happy with that for envy to be honest with you i'm actually really happy with that placing from envy uh they had some great great jobs out through the entire event octane is the dominant bow that we all know and love aqua had some great moments as well uh you know with that bow as well two great young players uh jcap had some good search and destroy moments i noticed he would constantly go off in hard points if it wasn't octane or aqua doing it and uh Lindy got some clutch 1v3s 1v2s and search and destroy uh, as well got to cast over envy once when they did end up losing to elevate uh which i believe was like a 3-1 but still very good run out of envy was very happy for them and i got to talk to tasmo the general manager of the cod team a little bit and uh, he was pretty happy with their performance overall uh and also envy i think was up 2-0 over og like they actually played each other the el classico of uh, of cod matches uh, envy was actually leading after the first two games and I was like, are they going to 3 OG? Because imagine, if they would have 3 0 OG, OG down to lose bracket, Envy moves on. What would have happened from there? Like, can you imagine OG having the power back from the loser's bracket? If Envy is is in the grand finals versus OG, and OG has to come back two times from previously getting 3 0 or 3 1 from Envy, anything could have happened. So, good moments from Envy. I got to say, I was very happy with him overall. 
And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of it for, t for Team Envious. The boys in blue did pretty well this weekend. Moving on to Team Elevate. Uh, got to cast over Elevate a couple times, and I was pretty happy with their performance. Uh, coming in third, definitely where I would have projected them to be at. I, I kind of was curious how Denial would work, uh, but Elevate coming off of a pretty good finish first at MES. Uh, I thought they would be on a pretty hot, pretty good hot streak, to be honest with you, and they ended up showing pretty, pretty strong. I, I can't say too much about them. They're all very consistent, at least for this event they were. Now, there wasn't one person we pointed at and said, oh, he's the he's the guy that's going to slay. He's the guy that's not going to do well. Like, they're, they're just very consistent players and ultimately led to, to their success. So, a uh, great job at Elevate. Moving on to second place, we had Denial. Got to cast over Denial uh, a little bit. I think I cast over two or three games of theirs. Um, Hook. Okay, what can I say about the man Hook? Dude, he just had an insane event. Dropped 40, 50 bombs like it was nothing. Uh, constantly went off in hard point. And the biggest thing, I think, for Denial, if, the, if whenever they were playing OG, is the first hard point, which is actually pretty close. Uh, Denial has good moments in hard point, but they seem to always get so many kills, and they don't get the kills that matter. It seems like, and what I've watched, is that Hook will get a lot of kills, which is phenomenal, don't get me wrong, I'm not taking anything away from Hook, because he is a Don, okay? Uh, but it seems like, for me, Denial always grabs kills that just don't always matter. Like, let's push a hill with two seconds left, and there's two guys in the hill. Like, well, you might get a two-piece, and you might get that one second, Unless it's the final hill, it doesn't really matter that much. Like, you know what? Maybe if we would have had Hook rotate, he could have got some entry kills and we ultimately could have done it, could have held down a hard point for a little bit longer. So it seemed like Elevate, or not, excuse me, not Elevate, it seemed like Denial in their hard point games that they played that I casted over them would seem to kind of get unnecessary kills, like push things that they didn't really need to push. Uh, you know, especially on Solar, I watched them play a lot and it seemed like they would always, like I said, push hard points when it didn't matter when you had the next parking garage hill, which is the money hill of Solar. They seem to push that last hill very heavily for like the last five seconds and it's very important to get control in the next one. And they just didn't seem to understand that. So I'm not sure if that was just them calling out incorrectly. Uh, Replays was doing a great job getting inside the hard point. And, uh, you know, I saw, I saw Slasher go off, and Hook and Temp were definitely the Bash Brothers this weekend. But going to give a ma major shout-out to them. I believe they played OG twice, and they obviously got 3-0'd in the Grand Final, which would obviously lead us to our first-place team, Opti Gaming. I had them winning this event. thought they would come back and win. Didn't think it would be against Denial, though. i got to say, I thought it would be FaZe, uh, but we already kind of talked about FaZe. But, uh, you know, OG had some great moments. I can always think of Scumps, that crazy shot against Envy on Biolab. Uh, Biolab uplink which was absolutely insane that was the that was the loudest i've ever heard a crowd at an event before not lying that was insane uh got a cast over formal 60 bomb like what Boy, he has to get the 60 bomb as we will be entering in players and they just swarm the hill there it is there's the opportunity to get it can he grab a 60 bomb there's a 60 bomb almost 61 formal absolutely dominating as obzi gaming will take this first game of retreat hard point 221 to 157 I just dropped my control. I don't know what to think about that, man. <laughs> 60 kills on Retreat Hardpoint, which is their best map, against Stunner. But still, 60 kills is absolutely insane. I had I got I got the privilege of watching that match and just seeing the dominance out of Formal. One of the best, if not the best, bow in the game. Uh, the day before, Clayster had dropped 56, and everyone was like, oh my gosh, you know, Clayster, 56 kills, wow. And then Formal's just like, nah, man, 60 kills, easily. Like, it was, like, he didn't even struggle. And I think everyone still on Optic was above 30 kills, so it wasn't like, oh, you know, Scump didn't do well, or Crim6 or Karma didn't do well. It was Formal just freaking dominating, and uh, that, it was just a phenomenal thing to watch. Uh, Crim6 had some great moments as well. Uh, you know, seems to always play pretty consistently for OG and Karma. While always people, people always like hate on Karma, but he gets the big plays. He's always very clutch. Uh, he is a two-time world champion, so you know he, he knows how to play the game. He knows how to play Call of Duty pretty well, and he obviously got that insane one v one. I think that was on Riot Search versus Wheats and one versus one. Nice. He's gonna be running at him. Not gonna get the kill. No. Well, maybe no. he gets the kill. Oh my God! Are you serious? What did we just see? That's why you're a two-time world champ right there. That's why you're a two-time world champ. Dude, that's so messed up. Oh that's my so God. messed up. We, I think we may have just given up, but it doesn't even matter. Dude, that's that game. was sick. That's that game. was sick. There's no way. You nah, can't win game three over. games in a row. Let's not give with three three like that. Three that's ridiculous. Three it's done. It's done. No, I think Everyone says that we stopped shooting after at, at him, but it's like the dude had sprayed a full clip. He missed it. Karma plants the bomb and then just freaking knifes the dude. Well, he jumps. He like... So he exos, like, stomps him and then he just pulls out the knife and just... 
whips it. I, I don't know what he was doing, but still, that was insane as that has done it for the video, guys. I do want to apologize, first of all, for uploading this a little bit late. I've been very busy, uh, but that's no excuse to not get out content for you guys. So I do apologize about that. More con content to come soon, whether it's esports related, whether it's Let's Plays, whatever it may be. A lot of content coming for you guys in the, in the upcoming days. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, and until next time, peace out. Boop. I'm on a run.